welcome everybody. It's time once again for the next chapter with Charlie Hedges. As he explores turning the page on his life and yours. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Paul. You know, I'm really interested in how our show evolves today because I think today's topic may be one of the most challenging we have ever discussed, certainly that I've been involved in. And what we're going to talk about today is something that I was reminded money can't buy. It's translated into all languages, and yet it takes enormous desire, time, and discipline to cultivate. And that may be the most important measure, and that it may be the most important measure of who we are in a free society, and that is the subject of character. My fear is that accomplishments, acquisitions, and blatant consumerism have blinded us to that which really matters. It's not about what we have. It's, it, 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 it should be more about who we are than what we have. And yet, apart from some, some religious institutions, who is focusing on the subject of character? I'm, I am sure it must be on the curriculum of some universities, but still, few high schools teach on the subject of character. It's not part of our electoral process any longer. And it feels vacant in our consumerism, which is far more interested in price product than internal, internal integrity. So what about the character of our leaders in industry and in politics? Are we as consumers more interested in what they provide for us than we are in the depth of their character? You know, I I wonder, and so today I want to chat about it with my dear compatriot, Terry Hershey. I hope that um, this will be a lively conversation mixed with mixed positions. Outcomes are indeed vital in this equation, although outcomes determine the direction of our culture and our economics. But outcomes do not represent the ethics and human values of the developers of these countries. Now... As you might expect today, since I'm talking about character, that I plan to appeal to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And from his historic I Have a Dream speech. Uh, and I want to discuss uh, less what we do than who we are. And, and I feel at the end of the day, as they say at the end of the day, you are your values. Ultimately, your values represent the barometer by which you coordinate your activities, your actions, your beliefs about other people. Now, I have an extended quote, which, quote from Psychology Today and psychologist Dr. Uh, Greg Enriquez, and I'll try, to, I'll try to make it brief, but it's a really good little section. It's kind of an extended quote. And he writes, Let's take a minute and reflect on what Martin Luther King meant when he talked about the content of character. This refers to the core ethical values of honesty and integrity, respecting others, taking responsibility for one's actions, being fair and just, and being someone who promotes love and compassion in others. We can also think about the character of our character in terms of virtues, which I will kind of pass on by. Uh, but this is quite a daunting list, and Enrique goes on to Enriquez. I'm sorry, goes on to query. Now ask yourself: Do I care about these values? Do I try to live up to these values? If the answer is yes, then why do you care about them? And Enriquez writes, along with Dr. King, I would argue that there is nothing more important than the context content of our character. and That's the end of the quote. So the question hangs, do you agree that nothing is more important than the content of our character? Today I bring back our friend Terry Hershey, author of 17 books, acclaimed public speaker and teacher, and minister of grace and human dignity. Terry, my friend, welcome to the next chapter with Charlie. Charles, it's good to be with you. Yeah. Except now you have to, uh, my, my bio has to read, not a claimed speaker, but a claimed Zoom. 
<laughs> Zoom gatherer. Yeah, let the, let the listeners know how many speaking engagements you have throughout the end of the year. <laughs> uh, you mean in, in person? The answer is zero. Yeah. In person, yeah. zero, and that and that was yeah. the way. That was your livelihood. That is correct. That is true. Yeah, a couple bucks here and there on a garden, but but for the most part, yeah. it was selling books and and speaking engagements, of which you had several because you're so good at what you do. So this... you know what, though, Charlie, that's an interesting thing because just that. I mean, just to throw this in the mix, because I was going to ask you a couple questions about your list about character, but when life gets upside down like that, for example, okay, well, that's not fun. I got to find a way way to make a living, and that's not and not easy. Well, character is easy to go by the wayside when life gets upside down. Why do you think, Terry? Because because we're so interested in in outcomes and acquisitions and and paying the bills and staying well, your alive. Your three lists, your your list. I was writing down because we hadn't talked about this before: accomplishments, acquisitions, and consumers. In other words. Yeah. And it's, it has to do with where I park my identity. In other words, where I park my value as a human. Boy, that's brilliant, Terry. I love that. Where do you park your identity as a human? And let's just let's just let's start with that. Where where do where does Terry Hershey park his identity as a human? Well, let's, I mean, let's start from the, uh, the beginning of how. Uh, of how all this sort of, because it's a narrative, and this is the thing that I like about our conversations is, very often, whatever the topic is, we're not certain the narrative because we haven't unpacked it in our own sort of thinking, right? Right. That's the whole process so, of, of the conversation. Exactly. So um, I can say to myself, of course character is important to me, and of course moral character is important to me for you know, I, for God's sake, and I say that intentionally, for God's sake, I was raised in a very Christian home. So moral character is very important to me. And then I have to think through what what did it mean to be a moral person way back when? And um, it's interesting to see how that, but my kind, the religion I was raised in was married to this sort of uh, what we would call the Western narrative you just did, which has to do with acquisition. In other words, the morality that I was trained to be, to be the good kid, was not just, it wasn't just for the sake of being a good kid. There was a payoff there. I got to make God happy, I got to impress people, and I got awards for it. Yeah, and you got speaking engagements. And I got speaking engagements, and I got paid. But and, and, and there was, did you feel you had ahead. to compromise your character in doing that? It's not about compromising your character. Is that I was my character had to do with who did I impress, and how did I go about impressing them? Holy cow! And that's 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 completely inverse of the way we're trying to define character today. Yeah. Because for us, see, a character in our Western mindset is still is something outside of us that we think we need to add, and therefore it still has that sort of, uh, uh, you know, it's just the list you gave. Yes, it's a good list. Yes. So it's, it's an acquisition. I need to acquire character. That's terrible. Yeah, that, you know, I've, ne I've never thought of it that way, Terry. That's why I'm pausing, because I think, I think, that rather than what you were born with, what you were taught with, what you believe in, what is honored and valued in society is is not that kind of character of honesty and integrity. Although, you know, we we still lean toward people like that. It's just they are not typically not powerful people. Rare is a person of, of honesty, integrity, and respect, and justice and fairness. Rarely are they people that get, that, that get high acclaim. The people that get high acclaim are the ones that make the money, the ones, and it's a power game. We had talked about this before, but power is so critically important, and 
power and character don't often, nowadays in America today, don't often run hand in hand. No, uh, no. It's a, um, it was a, it was a very, um, be, one of the first, uh, I mean, uh, I say one of the first, but one of the realities is um, of the upbringing that I had was that it it married itself to those uh, accomplishment, acquisition, consumerism kind of thing, even though we attach God's name to it. And, well, let me tell you, uh, so Charlie, uh, Charlie Brown goes to Snoopy, who's sitting on it. You know how he sat on his doghouse with a typewriter? Remember that? Uh, vaguely. I was in a big Charlie yeah, Brown he, fan. He was, yeah, yeah, but Snoopy was always typing. He, uh, sometimes he'd type, he was writing books. Okay. And so Charlie Brown says to Snoopy, what do you, uh, uh, Snoopy says, I'm writing a book about theology. And Charlie <laughs> Brown says, oh, that's great. What's the title? And Snoopy types, has it ever occurred to you, you might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the starting point for me, because uh, I'm thinking you asked you asked me should we talk about character, and the starting point for me is is really what's hard about this is the starting point has to be unbelievable humility that I have to let go of all the stuff I assumed I needed to be somebody, even to quote be a moral person. Yeah, I, I have I you know I have a comment. That I humility in in my recent pursuits is it, it's probably a key attribute for me to get anywhere that I want to go, and it's a it's sort of a a diminishment of self and a di- diminishment of you know trying to build up myself and and satisfy myself and to get myself out of the equation and get others and and for me to get God into the equation. And it calls for it calls for a radical humility, and a radical understanding of what I don't like about myself, which is not a not a pleasant journey. But it takes that journey for me to understand what I would like to what I would like to endure, what I would like enduring in my in my character. Yes, um, and the. Um... But the and because here's my question to you that the whole thing about because some people think if you go that that humility thing that you're you're somehow giving up your source of of strength and there's that there's that power concept again but you you don't you don't believe that do you? I it depends on where you consider my source of strength. If I if my source of strength is myself, then I am ready to give that up. But this is a this is a very spiritual thing for me, and I'm ready to put it into the hands of God. But it doesn't so it I, doesn't take away my responsibility. But, I, that doesn't, I, but we don't even go there because you have to you have to name where the responsibility, the capacity comes from. That's the thing we talked about. You know Reinhold Niebuhr, right? Yes. Okay, Reinhold. It's a quote that uh, I, I've always toyed with using, and I maybe now I'll use it in one of my writings someday, but Reinhold Niebuhr says, a man, uh, you could, let's just say man or woman, of course. is an individual, but he is not self-sufficing, self-sufficient. The law of his nature is love, which means a harmonious relation of life to life in obedience to the divine center and the source of his life. This law is violated when this man seeks to make himself the center and source of his own life. So, the, the, the American dream falls completely counter to that. Completely antithetical. Yes. Completely antithetical. Completely. And he, see, here's what's interesting, Charlie, because I, this is, we're going back to my childhood now, and we put different languages on it now, and um, we say, okay, we're going to, Kids, we're going to be we're going to be moral. We're going to be okay, good. And there's nothing wrong with oh, we're going to be character. But what do we do? We we write a book on the seven habits of, of good character people. And I'm not making fun of that. I'm just saying that's the way we picture it. 
Yes, and sort of a sort of formulaic. It, formulaic and acquisitional. In other words, yes. I'll learn it. I'll, I'll, uh, it's, it's like a test or a contest or a, uh, something I can get good at. And yet, in order for it to be genuine, in order for it, and, and believe me, people will sense genuine and they'll sense bullshit. And, and in order for it to be genuine, it can't be formulaic or acquisitional. It has to be part of a core essence, a core who you are at the deepest part of yourself. Correct. So you you, yeah. you you brought up a couple of times and 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 I, I want to make it I, I I want to understand your distinction. You've talked about character and morality. Do you do you see those as the same thing, or do you see a distinction between those? Well, I, uh, the 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 problem with the word morality is that it it it's it's attached to lists, and and so. Then, then it becomes like commandments, the Ten Commandments, and then it's a pecking order, you know, of just checking off the list. Um, and you know, and, and the the Pharisees had that list, the morality list. And remember, they quizzed Jesus about it. And he said, "I'm glad you got that list, but there's really only one: love." Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 you know what? In your tradition, you know your your conservative, your conservative Christian tradition, the top of the list of morality was um, was sexuality. Well, yeah, the top of the list was just uh, what, what we used to call uh, behind closed doors. What we used to call shit you didn't do. Shit, you, you know it. You know, I was thinking about that, and and I, I hope I'm not changing our subject here. But I was thinking about that as a question, and that what about when character or morality, whichever whichever term we choose to use, is defined more by what we don't do than it is defined by what we do do. One hundred percent. And and if it's defined by what we don't do, then it just becomes. Like like the Ten Commandments, it doesn't become like the Beatitudes, which to me are things that you do do. They are not things you don't do. They are, this is what See, you should and this do. Is, and, this, and, and, and we can take this to heart. Uh, because if it's something I don't do, it's, then therefore I'm holding up a medal for what I've achieved. As soon as I've held up a medal for my achievement, then I've, I've, I've automatically diminished what it means to be a person of character. You know, it's interesting. I'm not. I'm, Go ahead. Well, I'm just, uh, and, it, and it's not. It's not meant to um, to dis, to shame me. It's meant to free me from the fact that I don't need that medal. In other words, if I have the opportunity to to be kind to you, or or to 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 gather my pride and not have that with you or to give you a generous gift or to hug you or to see you or listen to you or any of the things that would make our encounter human if i have the capacity to do that um it's not about what i'm going to achieve with it and too often these character driven qualities or character driven attributes are aligned or associated with what I'm going to get out of it. How is it going to serve me? Right. Yeah, I just, I had a friend just, just last week, Terry, was um, invited, a friend wanted to invite him to be a man of character at some sort of event, and he just said, no way. He said, do not even, do not put my name up for vote, because if people knew who I really was, I would fail at it radically. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That to me speaks of a person of character. Yes, actually, that's a perfect illustration. I mean, I mean, uh, you know, you, you read you read all the saints, and Saint Augustine was that way. I mean, he he wanted to be a person of character, but he, you know, he didn't want to give up the other stuff in his life that he loved to do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, and he liked to do a uh, lot but, of stuff. But the point is, 
that when he be, he became a man of character when he was honest about that war. Do you think do you think a a a, a person of character can admit that they are a person of character but with flaws? Or do you think or do you think the whole humility aspect goes off the goes off the charts if you if you say I think I have some character in me. I mean, you know, um, you, you know, you mentioned Martin Luther King Jr. and that, and I mean, my uh, the person I look up to for that is Mister Rogers. Oh yeah. And I, I mean, even when he won awards, it wasn't about him. So yeah, yeah, that that film was. See, I, I wasn't a big Mister Rogers fan, so I, I didn't follow him a lot. But the Tom Hanks film helped me a lot in understanding much more about, you know, depending on how, how accurate the film was, but the film certainly made me feel much more about, about who he was and how he cared truly for the world and cared for others. Mm-hmm. And, 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 well, let me, let me, let me pause, let me pause, because this is important. The film was, uh, was based upon um, Tom Junid. Tom Junid is a, is a writer. Yeah, was a writer, writer that he worked he, with, yeah. Yeah, Tom Jr. was he, he was under contract. He did a lot of work for Esquire magazine, and Esquire did a uh, put Mister Rogers on the cover. And this is interesting. This is an interesting story. And the name of the the interview that that Juno did with Fred Rogers was uh, "Can You Say Hero" or something to that effect. And it was going to be Mister Rogers' picture on the cover of Esquire. And this is a long time ago, back in the nineties. Um, and and Esquire magazine, you know, it's very American macho. I mean, American successful. Sure, sure. Uh, image of, of of and there was a conversation among the people at Esquire, putting uh, having an article where Mister Rogers is the cover, and I was like, oh my god, that's uh, uh, that's that's going to hurt us badly. And do you know what the best selling Esquire magazine has been today? Was that Mr. it? Mr. Rogers. Was it? But really? here's what's interesting. So Tom Junid, Tom Junid goes to this thing thinking, oh my God, I'm going to interview Mr. Rogers. This, I mean, I'm, I'm really good at what I do. I'm, I'm really good at what I do and I have to do this. And um, Mr. Rogers saw him. And Tom Junid tells this story personally because the person playing him in the movie, they give him a different name. But the person playing him in the movie, and I'm, I'm about to break down here, Charlie. Because Mr. Rogers sees him, and he 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 sees him. He sees the boy in in the Tom Junid character. And Tom Junid said, watching that clip, the very first time I saw the movie, he said, "Yes, that's Mr. Rogers. He loves broken people." The point is that that Fred Rogers is because he didn't have to be somebody. He could honor the fact that we're in this together. That's the extraordinary thing. That's the irony of it, Charlie. Because once I give up my accomplishments, acquisitions, and consumerism, I think, who am I? What do I have to rely on? Well, now, because of that, I can see that I'm in this, we're in this together. That's the Jesus thing. Love has to be it. So let's, 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 Let's um, let, let's amplify this just just a bit. So y- y- you know you're, you're implying that character is is not a list of traits. It's not a it, it's it's not a to do list. Nevertheless, there are character traits to which to which we must aspire. Don't you think that there are things that Parts of our life that we're not, we we see holes in our life and say, I want to improve on this. I want to get better on that. That is a part of character development, don't you think? Yeah, so t- tell me what, because you, you made a list, and I forget who you're reading, Enrique, somebody. Tell me what that list was, honesty, integrity. What was I'm going to put it, I, I made it simplify. I simplified it. And I yeah, put what did you, you say trust, the list was? Trust, respect, responsibility, fairness. And the promotion of love, kindness, and compassion. Yeah. So, yeah, I, um, yeah, and I, you know, 
I'm not going to argue with that list. I mean, and I and I don't disagree with you. The fact that uh, I I seek to have these things when they when when someone has an interaction with me, I I hope that that's the, the that they would say those things would be true. I don't I don't disagree with that. But but it's a hell of a thing if you put it up and you put it on your on your objective list and then you're checking it off. Okay, yes, I'm I'm. I'm trustworthy today. I'm I'm respectful today. I mean that 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 sort of it sort of loses that its meaning purpose, when yeah. you do that. Yeah. Okay. I'm let, not only I'm Charlie. I am not only trustworthy. I am the most trustworthy of any of your friends, and not only the most trustworthy. You've never had, seen anybody more trustworthy than me. <laughs> so that's what we end up doing. Yeah, the the problem is Terry. I trust you, but I, 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 I the things that I trust may not be the things that I admire. <laughs> that's exactly right. But that's the whole point. Is as soon as I make it something that goes on that other list, then it's then it's for the wrong reason. Okay, that's a that's a perfect way to um, take a break and start back and, and 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 start back and say, how do we engender within ourselves? How do we engender the capacity to be people of character rather than people, consumeristic, acquisitional, power-hungry people? What, what sort of personal changes must, must, we, must we make in order to be that person we want to be? Let's come back and talk about that. Hi there, this is Charlie Hedges, and you're listening to the next chapter with Charlie, and I'm with my dear friend Terry Hershey, and we are we are talking about what I thought would be a pretty straightforward topic that's turned out to be much more complicated than than I thought it would be. And we're talking about the content of our character and how what kind of society do we live in that character is not at least, it, 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 you know, I think it. I think it's kind of secretly admired, but not overtly admired. I mean, I think people recognize a trustworthy and respectful person, and they and they love them and honor them. But they don't. It doesn't get. It doesn't draw a lot of press. And so, what Terry and I were talking about as we before we went on break is how does one go about. Go about as Ben Franklin would have written, because he wrote a lot on character, about what is what are some good attributes of character without making it a simple checklist, and you, you know how well am I doing today at that? What what kinds of what kinds of um, processes might we use to become a person of character? Or maybe not for you know it's it's for us to become a person of character, but also I think I think what it takes Terry you know because I'm going to answer the question it becomes admiring a person of character, and finding a role model that I want to be like that person. I see someone said I want to be like that person. I'm not after that person's power. I'm after that person's heart. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, um, that's that's good. Um, so, because I was thinking about the question you asked before the break, which is, um, what would be the, what would be, because I'm thinking of the questions that I would ask people, and and here are the two questions for me, Charlie. Is one is um, because the people I know of character, uh, Mother Teresa. <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr., um, um, uh, Mr. Rogers, my grandmother. The people of character at some point in their life had to take themselves out of the center of their life, and they had to understand the concept of mercy. And the, and the, the concept of mercy, but that also implies 
an understanding that you need mercy. In the sense that mercy, if you, if I need mercy, then we're going back to the very beginning of your, of your, your comments, which is, therefore, I am not the center of the world. Therefore, I'm not the center of, of even this conversation. Therefore, I, I'm, not the, I'm not the center. In other words, anybody who has to make themselves the center doesn't un, has not received mercy. That's a great comment. That's a, that's a, that, that's a great... Could, could you perhaps give an example of that? Could you, could you elaborate on that a bit? Because I love that concept. Does it come to um, you? The Niebuhr quote I was giving is that um, th- at some point I, I have to wrestle with the fact that everything I thought I needed to be to be, quote, somebody was either A, not sufficient, or, or, uh, or B, didn't matter. And because the second thing, I, I need to add something to this. The second thing after mercy is grace, which I can talk about. But mercy is the fact that um, there is a lifeline to me that Terry, this Terry without any of that other stuff is enough. And therefore, I don't need to, I don't need to be, I, there's no need for puffery. There's no need for pontificating. There, there's no need to be pompous. There's no need to have character as an accomplishment, acquisition, or as a consumer. And as a matter of fact, it, 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 it really goes against the whole purpose of the, of the exercise. 100%. So, so do, you think, do you think Jesus' words of consider the needs of one another as greater than your own is a pathway to character? Yeah, I mean, I mean, because he turned everything on its head. He turned the, uh, the Old Testament system, which was, you know, thank God, at least we have our list. We know what the list is, you know, and I'm not, I get that. But he's saying there's something underneath that is basically what he was saying. And, um, um, you know, the, his, a lot of his comments, the least of these, you know. Or, or praying for people that are our enemies. <laughs> All the stuff that we can only do if I don't need to do it to be impressive. So it really, it really, it seems in our discussion that it's coming down to what is important. Is it, is it power and stuff? Or is it a genuine humility of self and caring for other people? I mean, you know, that, that, would, be, that would be character right there. Humility of self and caring for other people. And, and, and consistency, and then we can just keep going on and on. And you can see, I mean, I, mean, I take Jesus, for example, and in any of his conversations in the New Testament, as soon as someone entered his sphere, the, the the emphasis of the focus was on them, the other person. That was extraordinary. In other words, he didn't need to be somebody or do something, and that's why I'm impressed with Mr. Rogers. That's what happens with Mr. Rogers. He, he didn't need to be important. He didn't need to be the center. You can't do... Charlie, you can't do things like love one another or the least of these or pray for your enemy if you have to be the center. You can't. Yeah, that's, um, you, you know what it reminds me of, and, you know, my listeners, fortunately I haven't spoken of it for a long time, but, you know, in Richard Rohr's first and second half of life, it really talks about second half living, of not fulfilling the ego and not having all these ego demands and, and letting go of the ego and letting go and then more more of a giving and a complimenting sort of heart sort of sort of way of life. Well, let me ask you a question because that's good because that's good that um, is the reframing of that is in other words because I'm asking you so about character 
if you're thinking of character as these things to add, I need to be trusting and honest and integrity and fairness. Those are great things. I don't disagree with that at all. I want those things. But if you start with letting go of my ego, don't you sort of now make space for those things? Yes, yes. You, you, you make space for them, and they not only just make space for them, you actually birth them. They. That's a good verb. That's a good verb. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, because you can't, you can't, uh, uh, in other, birth is good because that means it's internal. It's already there. So tell me about, tell me about, not about, not about Martin Luther King and, and Gandhi and the rest of them all. Who do you, do you know people of character today that are just, that no one else besides you and the handful of friends they have would know about those people, but you consider them strong people of character? And and if so, what is the, um, what makes you think that? You know, what do they, what do they do? What do they like that makes you say, boy, I could trust that person with, with, very important things, and and I and I think they're they're coming from a good heart. Can you can you talk about an, an ordinary everyday person like that? Um, the yeah, that's interesting. But I'll start with a, 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 a caveat, and that is the people I think of that come to mind for that are also um, people who are um, have ha- have been messed up internally. In other words they're quite less than perfect. So it has nothing to do with that. But these are people for whom mercy and grace are real. And I can tell you two things about these people in my life. One is when I'm with them, they, they make space for me as in I am real. Two is when you see the people in their life, me and or others, the people in their life, once they walk out of that encounter, they're better off for having had that encounter. Yeah, and... and That's how you can tell a person of character is, do their friends, do they leave people better off or not? Yeah, and better off and better off internally, not necessarily empowering right, them right, to make right, money right. Exactly, financially. Exactly, exactly. Better, exactly. Are, are, exactly. are you a better person? Do you feel better about yeah. yourself? And yeah, exactly. Internally, in other words, are, in other words, do they do they are they a dispenser of mercy and grace themselves? Yeah. Boy, you know, Terry, you you you've really you've really turned. You've done a Jesus trick on us, and you've turned this whole character discussion into something very different. than I really love the idea of not making a checklist of where is my checklist of. Trust, respect, responsibility, fairness, and a promotion of love, kindness, and compassion. I mean, how is that not crucial? But if you make that that a checklist, then it's it's but more Charlie, of a superficial I mean, action than than something that's coming yeah, from the heart that requires that requires brokenness, having failed absolutely. at that, having failed at every single one of those, and and. and Absolutely. And so, because you know as well as I do, and, you know, it's it's hard not to go into, uh, you know, because uh, everything becomes, quote, political. And, but you know as well as I do, we have, we have fights, fights, public fights about who's the, quote, most honest. For God's sake. That's how you know it's not a character thing. If you have to fight about who's the most. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, that's extremely true. You know, I, I wrote a, I wrote a blog some weeks ago that says uh, the disappearance of role models, and when it comes to character, we have really no no face that I can think of. I'm sure you, but we have no current face of ethics and character. We have face of power. We have pay face of position. We have faith of you know faith in in belief what I believe, 
but not who I am. Am I, am I, am I person? Am I a broken person that can be trusted? That's worked through that, and am trying my best to be a better a better person as a result. We we have we have no we have no role model for that. I mean, if we do, I'm, they're they're not well known. I'm sure we have role models for it, but they're just they're not making the press. Yeah, it's very difficult in, in a world um, it, because what you're talking about is public figures. It's very difficult in a world to to. Uh, I, and I don't know. Maybe it's, it's about the way our world, uh, who we adulate, you know, and who we put at the top uh, in terms of uh, coverage. But I don't disagree with you. And But you know what? I mean, it's my recommendation, because you asked me, you asked me the question, are there people like that in my life? That's the question you need to, I mean, every person listening to your podcast, it's a, it's a beneficial question to ask. Who are these people for me? And how do these people help me be people who are... Because the thing about mercy and grace is that that way, when I walk into an encounter with someone, I, I'm not afraid to say, you know what, I don't know. I'm not afraid to say, you know what, I'm, I could be wrong. You know what, I'm not afraid to say I want to learn. I'm not afraid to say that. Yeah, I, 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 so, I so concur. You know, I... I, I've told the story. I, I won't bore you with the story, but I've told it over and over again about my first meeting with the bishop when I came in as a conservative, and he was a liberal. And he says the one thing that we have to be able to, and this was in Christianity, and he said the one thing we have to be able to admit is that the Bible could, let, let's let assume the Bible is not wrong, but we as broken human beings we have to be open to the fact that we can be wrong in our interpretation. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, that has stuck with me ever since, that I can, I can be wrong. Uh, there was another question I had for you, too, before we close up, and, and since I didn't write it down, I'm not remembering it. But it was a good question, so we can just we can just pretend that there was a good question in there, somewhere. You know, what you need to do is put is put in the show notes at the end of the show. Charlie asked one of the best questions that have ever been asked. No, 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 no. Charlie thought of one of the best questions that, have, <laughs> that is. Charlie thought of one of the best questions that's never been asked. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I, I I love your take, Hirsch. I mean I I I love your take and 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 you know I certainly I re- I so resonate because I was hung up on this about trying to be all of this this list this character list and it's not a character list it's a persona and it, and it is a it is a humility of persona and you you know you named that off early on in the show and and i think i think that is that is it now now you know i want to give an example that you gave of a friend who differs from you sort of ideologically but but his his character quotient is quite high and you said you would vote for him to be it's this is not politics this is in smaller organizations you would you you would be an advocate of him being a leader of this organization even though you disagreed with him and you could continue to disagree with him but you knew he was a man of great heart and great character and was going to do something that he felt was right and genuine and good for people yeah and and yeah, we were talking about whether I'd vote for him to be a pastor of a church, for example, because right. the person we're talking about, I, I disagree with him on, on what we would call policy issues on just about everything. But I know that in leadership, he's going to he's gonna be the first to say, I could be wrong about this, and the second to say, I need other people to be involved in this. In other words, in other words I'm not the center of the universe. And that is, and that is, you know, I, you know, you know, Paul's, Paul's wanting to close, and I'm wanting to go on and on and on, but I, but I do have this question because, because it is so true, in that, in, 
you know, we even as a population, forget our leaders, but even as a population, and, you know, we're not going to get into our leaders' polities and all of that, but mm-hmm. but the followers, you know, the, 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 the constituents of each of our leaders each have a very personal agenda that they want to accomplish that has nothing to do with character. That had, or has n- not not necessarily all of them nothing to do with character, but it's a they want certain policies and they want they want power and they want accomplishment, and and would it help us to think differently or is that just a whole different subject? Well, I think I think I think uh, I I think the answer is one hundred percent yes, and I have to go through that too personally because. There are certain choices I I would want us to make policy wise, and by the way, policy always has to be a compromise. There's not like a stark 100 percent policy. Right. So I start with the compromise part. And um, policy always and, has a moral aspect to it, whether. But it always has a moral aspect to it, yeah. And I don't remember where I was going when I started that sentence, but it was going to be really good. It was like the question you were going to ask. <laughs> And then I interrupted you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to be really, really good, though. Yeah, okay, so we so let's end with that with two to a, a a question, the best question I never asked, and the best response you never gave. Yeah, <laughs> and it, which is go, goes back to Snoopy. Has it ever occurred to you you might be wrong? <laughs> but the point is, at the bottom line is, can we actually sit as people together as humans? You know that is that is that is so so brilliant, uh, and I, I will I will close with this story. I had a um, I have a, a a friend who's my my personal coach, and and um, she's been on the podcast several times, and she had a gathering the other night, and it was and it was a gathering of, of a very diverse gathering, and we were just and it was a Zoom gathering. It wasn't in a in a room. It was a Zoom gathering. And it was just to talk about current issues and to try to talk as respectfully yet as truthfully to you as you possibly could. And Terry, that was so healthy. We, I think everybody walked away with understanding everybody else better, uh, you know, much more camaraderie. And, and I think it was a very character-filled, nobody was looking for accomplishments and no one was looking for their way to come about, but... People simply looking to understand, and how valuable that would be, and that's a that to me is that that's a character issue of of trying to understand and trying to trying to be considerate of other people. That's a great story, Charlie. And I mean, what what struck me about it when you told me was that any time character is present in our world, it is a gift to us. It's a great close, Terry. Let's um, anytime character is exposed to to us in the world, it is a gift to us individually, and it is a gift to the world. Terry Hershey, I um, I love having you as a friend, and I love having you uh, on our podcast. Thank you so much for spending time with me, and and for entering your dinner cooking time. Likewise, my friend. Okay, Likewise. buddy. Take care.